we are going to bump this up to one and a half, and I am going quarter, to provide. We're, we're, we're going to quartering speed. Yeah, I'm going to provide a lot of filler. <laughs> This post was made to the subreddit r slash Instagram by the user numerous cuts 792 on April 15th, 2024. So the pretense to going into this is Nick Crawley, as far as I can trace it back, seems to have the most information and was actually used in Nexpo's video when it comes to Smart School Boy 9. So that's why I'm using his video. Okay, it featured so screenshots like of three designers. Designers. Kind of, but it, it, this happened like so much on top of each other that like the, this is literally a brand new phenomenon. Instagram pages they had encountered earlier that day, with OP expressing concern that something truly disturbing was happening with these users, and those on the thread agreed. What the actual fuck? Found all of them and blocked them all. Truth Sticks 11 is seriously creepy to me. I've been trying to find more about them, but can hardly find anything. Very weird account, to say the least. The three accounts apparently belong to three different children. However, when combing through their posts, the content seems to imply something much more bizarre was afoot. Something truly disturbing. This post would be the start of a story that would eventually be picked up and shared all across the online world, becoming one of the more notorious internet mysteries in recent memory, as these accounts revealed an unending rabbit hole that is still being traversed to this very day, in an ongoing investigation into one of the most depraved oddities ever found on Instagram. This is the emerging story of Smart School Boy 9. We'll return after these messages. Before we get too far down this road, I'm gonna try and speed up. Bit of bit, bit of bit, over the ads. Beautiful boy, an account looked after by me, a degree educated mother choosing to stay anonymous. This was the bio of the first account pictured in the Reddit post, an account named TruthSticks11, which was said to be operated by a 12 year old boy and his mother. Back in October of 2021, the duo would make their very first post, kicking things off on a somewhat concerning note, though not for their own page, but instead another account on the platform. So, that's the account run by a man pretending to be a boy. <laughs> The video was created and posted by the mother for the sole purpose of warning others of a specific- What do you think so far? It's- I'm interested to see where this goes. Like, it's- it, It's gonna get weird. Quick. ...specific user, who had been posing as a child online, when in actuality he was a grown man, who did this in order to get close to and exploit other children across the platform. It's the grim reality of this online world, as predators will do just about anything to get closer to children, and it's a reality often unrealized or even ignored by parents, which makes it almost refreshing that this mother was out here trying to raise awareness. These posts would become the crux of the account early on. They would call out this user and their many accounts again and again, eventually going more in depth about what this person would actually do, claiming that they had a strange perversion to dressing up as a young schoolboy. Does he wish he were a young boy in a school classroom, looking nice and being successful at school? Yes. This theme of calling out online predators would remain consistent throughout the years on Truth Sticks 11. However, after some time, the mother behind the account began to use the page for its initially intended purpose, to share photos of her son. The photos began reasonably normal, and would show this young boy studying at school, accepting awards from the principal, and even school presentations in which their son had attended, with the captions often boasting about how intelligent the young boy was. Can you notice anything right off the bat? Though over time, the photos began to grow stranger. What? They looked off, almost as if they were AI generated, and on top of this, they began to appear heavily edited, in an almost inexplicable manner, with deep red lipstick often being added, which was enunciated by his face being turned pure white. This unsettling trend would continue from here, as with each passing post, the photos grew less authentic and more surreal. Until they became straight up disturbed, even sickening. These bizarre edits spilled over past just the images too, as the posts began to appear as disjointed collages, often showcasing multiple grotesque images and paragraphs about how much this user loved school. And this wasn't the only shift either. At some point- What do you think now? When I was going through, <clears throat> It's it's hard. I'm going. To, I don't know how to describe this without sounding too weird, but like when I see something that unsettles me, I get like this like pleasurable shiver down my spine. <laughs> like, that's how I felt. Like I got. It, I can feel it. It's weird because I can feel it like almost in my brainstem. Yep. Shooting through me. Yep. And like like my like hair stands on end, and I'm like, ooh, okay, now I'm. Now I'm good. You know what I mean? That's how I felt like. Yeah. So did you notice anything in the initial set of photos, the unedited looking ones? No. Okay. I I did when I first watched this, but I'll let this go on. At some point, the son behind the account began posting content that allegedly came directly from him, saying things like, my really cool mom asked me if I'd like to post, and I said, yes, please. He even shared supposed videos that he had filmed of himself, which were equally as unconvincing as his photos, and somehow even more chilling. You're not ready for these videos, by the way. <laughs> the boy even shows off his singing in one of the clips. Cool. 
That's giving Ooh, me I feel fantastic vibes. Yes. <laughs> off. The account was overall anomalous and extremely off-putting. And though this content was visually alarming, another aspect made it even more so concerning, as over time, many of the images began to resemble CP, showcasing these fake AI children in explicit positions, with their faces sometimes even being photoshopped onto scantily dressed adult bodies. One thing is blatantly obvious about the Truth Sticks account, the supposed child behind it is not real. Even in the more passable photos at the very beginning, Look at this photo really quick. Does anything stand out to you? Let me um pull it to my other monitor because I have it on my second monitor because I was looking at it. Yeah. But let me pull it to my front one where I can really zoom into it with my face hole. <laughs> <clears throat> Damn it. Load. Because there's okay. something that stood out to me immediately with these. Uh, maybe it's the quality, but like the way the arms are, they look really thin. You're going probably deeper than I went on this. These, okay. These are not new photos. Nothing about this seems, screams to me like high DPI, recent image, hairstyles not even recent, clothing's not recent, like paintings, the background. This reminds me of the 90s. Yes. Like this kind of yes. reminds me of the 90s because I had that same, I had a similar haircut. Actually, that, that... looks kind of like me actually because I had like the, the bowl, the blonde bowl cut. Yeah. Like, that'll play into this. There's evidence to suggest that these were likely AI as well. And based on the disturbed, borderline illegal content that this page featured, it seemed more than likely that whoever was behind this page was not an innocent mother concerned for the welfare of other children, but instead, a predatory individual themselves. And this wasn't their only account. The second page featured on the Reddit post belonged to a user named GirlChloe12 and bore striking similarities to Truth Sticks. The page was also supposedly run by a child and monitored by their parent. Bizarrely, they also posted frequently about the dangers of online predators, with the wording of these posts and the editing being essentially the exact same as Truth Sticks, just not as over the top. These two accounts even frequently interacted with each other, thus providing a substantial link on its own. But by far the most compelling link between these pages is one that is easy to miss at a glance, with that being a blatant obsession with high-heeled mini boots. These shoes were mentioned or shown in virtually every single post made by these two users. At playtime, I'm sometimes running around with my really cool heeled footwear I wear with my uniform. After coming home from school, education isn't over for the day once the blue blazer, gray jersey, knee tie, white shirt, tailored close fit gray trousers, and black heeled mini boots are in the wardrobe. No matter what they discussed, school uniforms and mini boots were always a talking point, which adds confirmation to something that is already becoming apparent. This is fetish content. Not too unlike the bizarre yeah. in the paper. I literally said that two seconds before it. <laughs> I literally I like how I said it right before it. It's fetishization. Fetish content centered around children. And what makes the Chloe account so disturbing is that AI was seemingly not used. And rather, the images seem to be of actual children. Despite this disturbing distinction, these two accounts are cut from the same cloth, and all signs point to them being created by the same person. A person who, despite their constant warnings of the dangers of adults pretending to be children online, seems to be doing the exact same thing, as part of some sort of fetish, the extent of which we'll discuss later. But for now, one thing was for certain. These pages were not run by children, or their parents. So, who created them? Well, that brings it's us disturbing. to our third and final account it's... shown in- I just get, like, like the image of him with those, like, his lips like that. Did you- or do you get the same, um- Vibes of like John Bonet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like, that would be like, roughly yeah, uh, yeah. Because like, I'm getting John Bonet Ramsey vibes like, just from like the look and the presentation of it. Uh, I'll let you keep watching. In that initial post. Smart Schoolboy 9 was much the same as the other two accounts. They warned of online predators, obsessed over high-heeled mini boots and school uniforms, and posed as a child despite clearly not being one. But Smart Schoolboy was different in one key aspect. The person behind the account was pretending to be a child, but they were doing so in a much more apparent manner, as they didn't use AI or stolen images of other kids to form their identity. And instead, they used photos of... themselves. In the images posted on the account, we see what appears to be a fully grown nice. man dressed in a schoolboy's uniform. His face is painted pure white and has bright red lipstick. And he's, of course, wearing high-heeled mini boots. Characteristics that were all utilized across the other accounts. Only this time, it was done on himself, as he poses as a child pretending to go to school, as well as pretending to go through other life events common for preteens. And the photos aren't even the most disturbing part, as the account consists primarily of videos. The videos are all incredibly off-putting. I'm... You, you, you know that show that I said I got? Yeah. I feel like it's lying to me. <laughs> I like feel part of me is like, I'm getting ready for like a really cool like analog horror. Or like Funny ARG. you should say that. that there's a lot of people I, I... that think this may be an ARG. And then I'm looking at it, and then it's like, some of this is disturbing, but some of this is also, like, the editing techniques look like, like, ARG or, like, 
found footage or like an analog horror. Like, what if this is an analog horror warning about the actual dangers of online predators? Like, that's something that a lot of people think. But I don't know if that's. I'm uncomfortable because I feel like there's a plot twist. <laughs> I don't know if the plot twist is shown in here yet. Because <laughs> I forgot. I've watched like two, three videos on this. And there's a lot of overlapping, but there's also bits and pieces of differential information too. Oh. oh. Some show him arriving home from school. Oh. Others show him claiming to be on the bus heading towards school. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm on this school bus. And other videos showing him doing whatever this is. With these strange sounds and the process of sticking his tongue out appearing to be part of his fetish. As much like the other accounts, his content is overtly sexual, in its own bizarre way. In fact, there's a video of him with his full outfit on, where he shows himself staring into a mirror as he appears to pleasure himself, right out of view of the camera, as he stares into his own eyes. This account is by far the most sickening part of this whole rabbit hole, and also the most important. Interspersed throughout his page are a few examples of what this individual's voice sounds like. This is quite good. <laughs> which just so happens to be the same voice. It's the same voice as one of the orig original accounts, but when I heard it, I was like, it, sounded, it sounds like a modulated voice. Like, it didn't sound real to me to begin with like it or, or ran out. through a filter or it, something is somebody even masking their voice voice heard in the very first clip shown on the truth sticks account man pretending to be a boy <laughs> Meaning see what i mean like it sounds like somebody putting on a voice yeah almost like uh, it, almost it did, larping yeah it didn't sound it didn't sound original to me it, even when i heard that i was like that that's somebody faking a voice, obviously. Like, to me, that was so blatantly obvious. But the fact that, like, people didn't pick up on for a while, I'm like... Or I don't know if that's the case, or time just elapsed, because there's other weird things. We'll just keep playing. I mean, that this full yeah, that could have been one of those things where it's, like, pushed to the back because there's more disturbing things in the forefront. I, I think time. This has been occurring for a long period of time across many accounts. Oh, no behind this entire rabbit hole. He's the one on these accounts pretending to be a child and their mother, getting some sort of sick satisfaction from whatever this is. And the worst part is, these activities aren't just kept behind closed doors. As we can see on numerous occasions, videos of him walking around outside in a public space, with his full outfit and face paint on. It's truly one of the strangest things that I've ever seen, and making sense of what this all is is extremely difficult. But based on the information found from this first Reddit post, a few likely conclusions can be put forward. This man is clearly attracted to the idea of being a kid, and I think OP was correct when they speculated that this was some sort of age play thing. But it's also clearly much more than that too, as based on the images that he's created himself, he clearly has some sort of attraction to other children as well, as he's quite literally created faux CP, the likes of which is so disturbing that I can't even really describe it here either. He's creating fetish content, and he's using the likeness of children, and also some children that are clearly very real people, to do so. That much is obvious, but there was also the possibility that he was pretending to be a kid in order to exploit other children across the internet. At this point though, this was merely speculation, with much of the Smart Schoolboy 9 case remaining a mystery, and the rabbit hole was only getting deeper from here. So when were those accounts done? Uh, a little while back, but there's still stuff ongoing presently on, on uh, Instagram. Like recently... Okay. The, I know one of the more recent developments was that the account, the Smart Schoolboy 9 actual orig uh, account, is now removed off of Instagram. Okay. So here's a theory. Yep. The blonde boy, do you think that's him? Yeah, you're on to it. That he's fetishizing himself? Now you're on to my train of thought. That is why I took so much time to point out, look at that picture. Because of the the age of the photo and now i'm like trying to piece together like the time frame because i was about seven or eight now now i'm 34 it kind of looks like around our age right right so that that would have added up then if this is a current ongoing thing that he would be late 20s mid 30s depending yeah. on what when in the 90s or if it was early 2000s like the early aughts. shift shift your scale by 10 up or down up so the early aughts uh yeah Okay, so like the the two thousand two thousand one like right out of oh no not your not your year scale I apologize your your oh, okay. your age scale so not twenties and thirties he's thirties or forties I think 
Okay, so then he would have been... Well, that would have made sense, because if he was in the 90s, it would have been, like, maybe, like, 85, 86. Yep. Because he would have been around, like, between, like, 7 and 13 in those images. Yep. So that would have put him right around, like, being 5 in the 90... 1990. Yeah. Which would have given, like, early to mid-90s being a preteen to a teen. Yep. That's my thought. Months after this rabbit hole was introduced to the online world, the story began to be shared all across the internet, most notably on the r slash internet mystery subreddit, where the case really took off. There, internet sleuths began uncovering just how vast this web of accounts actually was, as it wasn't just these three pages. No, there seemed to be over a dozen, and likely even more that we still haven't found, as he's created his own sort of community, his own little world, where across each page he pretends to be a child, with these accounts typically following each other and frequently interacting, seemingly to make these characters appear as though they have real friends. On one of these pages, 12 Stockwell Joanne, he poses as a 14-year-old girl, using more AI images to depict explicit positions of this manufactured child, which I obviously am not going to show here. Though much like his Chloe account, he also shows images of very real young girls. But this isn't the most concerning part of this account, as on numerous occasions, he's shown images of children at a playground, which he may have taken himself. This fantasy of being a schoolgirl and taking part in these school-centric activities is something carried over throughout multiple of his accounts, with his most common alias being Stephanie, of which he has numerous different accounts featuring that same name. Yeah, I'm Stephanie. This Stephanie character claims to be a 12-year-old aspiring poet, with accounts all across the internet, many of which showcasing examples of her poetry, which carries on those same distinct sexual undertones. I race to complete my poems when I've got an early start, heart racing, mixed rhythms, maximizing miracles, rice with rap, and on the map, my Kennington, London syllables, dancing though I know my underwear might show if I lean forward. Good. Stephanie Stansfield, 12. <coughs> but digging even deeper, her poetry has even seemingly been featured in various articles and even newspapers, showcasing that this rabbit hole extends far past just the online world. This now you're getting into the rabbit hole. It's so weird because, like, I, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, yes, it's fetishist, like, fetishistic. Fetishism? Fetishistic. Oh, okay. But it also seems artsy. It it feels almost too artsy to be, like, not an it's, ARG. It's too just, it feels so disjointed to me that it feels non-ARG. Like, See, that's... That... That's the thing. Like, there's... there's n uh, I, there's no way you would know that um, ARGs are going to come about to be a thing, to do things, to have them in print prior to them being a thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's... My thing is, it seems a little too performative. But uh, maybe that's sort of... Maybe that's the point? Like, it's like a deep-seated, like, almost, like, um, exhibitionism? Yeah. Like it's almost like a like a self like almost like autogynephilia like ex like exhibitionism, where he's like sexualizing himself because he like gets off on it, and that's like what the image the the video of him with the mirror is. It's him kind of being blatant about the message of it. I've got some speculations that would correlate that. Um, mine is I think that. He was um, a victim of childhood predation, and uh, that's where the be careful for predators thing comes from, especially because, you know, don't talk to strangers and all that is a big thing about the time period that we grew up in. Uh, yeah, stranger so, danger. Yeah. So, like, that's a big part of it. So that, again, feeds into the age thing that we've kind of already talked about. The fact that a lot of the images that are genuine images seem to be him most of the time. Um, I think that he, so he has me... basically taken, taken a child that was abused, which is him, and now fetishizes the abuse that he went through as an adult. So let me throw this theory at you. Do you think this is a self-fetishization as a, as a coping method of a way to, like deal with the sexual trauma well then also um trying to warn people with it could be like i don't know about the warn people thing of it i don't know if this is one of those the prey has become the predator type situations or what because he's saying like you know beware of that and it's like it makes me almost wonder if like he's not suffering from like you know like not to bring this person up, but like hopeless peaches, right? This is could be this is what like age regression would look like. 
I mean, could potentially, yeah. Just look at, like, Michael Jackson, right? Yeah. How Michael Jackson acted and, like, age regressed. Could it be that the, the, the fetishization is a way to cope with the sexual trauma alongside the age regression for him to live out the childhood he never had while sexually fetishizing himself so his mind can sort of come to terms with being violated? Yeah. I mean, could be. I, I think uh, it's a good, valid potentiality. Like I'm no professional, right? Like I'm, I'm not. But like, I, I, I'm trying to draw some pinpoints here, and I'd be curious that if, what a, you know what I mean? Like if yeah. I'm on to something, or if I'm just like trying to big brain it, because, you know, I read a few things on the internet, and I think I know more than I do, or something. Like, <laughs> I'll keep playing. You get you more I mean, context. Like... <laughs> This act is clearly their obsession, and he's been doing this for years, with the earliest examples that I could find coming from all the way back in 2018. And this Stephanie character seems to be his go-to alias, embodying it in even the literal sense. As in one of his many pages dedicated to this Stephanie character, he dresses as her, wearing a wig and a dress, as he pretends to be a 12-year-old girl. Almost immediately after this case began gaining traction, the true magnitude of this rabbit hole was revealed. Across every single account are countless depraved posts and oddities that all could warrant discussion, but by far the most important discoveries were those that didn't actually occur on his own page, and rather, the pages of other actual children. Do you like school? I do. It is good. You have some cool shirts, but I have to wear school uniforms to school. It is nice, but casual isn't allowed, and it's quite hot here in the UK, as the month of June suddenly got warmer. These are two examples out of many that show smart schoolboy9 reaching out and attempting to befriend young children online. In one comment, he even warns a child about other comments from bad people, stating that, It happens to most boys in our age group, but stay safe, stay cool, don't be dismayed by creeps. This is our best evidence that these accounts weren't just made for age play. No, he's actually posing as a child in order to make friends with other children. And given his overtly sexual interests and aversion to CP, it's not hard to gather why he was doing this. And these examples are only what we found so far. It's possible that there are dozens, or who knows, maybe even hundreds of other comments out there, hidden on unknown children's accounts. This is predatory behavior. The man behind Schoolboy 9 is a predator. And in case there was still any doubt of whether or not this was a sexual thing, here's what he had to say about being a 13-year-old girl. But have his tactics actually worked? Well, the frightening thing is, no one knows if he's actually been successful or not, or even what specifically he's looking for. We just know that he's trying to reach kids, as evidenced not only by his comments, but by the fact that he's solely following children on all of these pages. And though it's easy to look at these accounts and know that something is off, for children, it's not that simple, especially when there's pages showcasing photos of actual kids. Which brings up another frightening detail. Many of the images he's used of children have not been traced back to their original creator, and some seem to appear for the very first time online publicly on this man's pages, which might mean that he was sent them privately. There's even one image that David posted on his schoolboy account, which shows another kid that he claimed to be on a playdate with, though it's impossible to say if this is real or not. For now, we just don't know for sure. Though given the fact that he's reaching out to children, posting fetish content centered around children, and has even potentially photographed kids in the wild, one thing is for certain. Smart Schoolboy 9 needs to be stopped. So what do you think about that section? It's it's very interesting because... I agree I agree with, like, he, he is being predatory. Whether he, he knows and is aware of it or not, he's being predatory. And he clearly has fetishized this. Yeah. Yeah, th that that's the big question I have is like with when he's reaching out to these kids, like what it does is it because he feels he is one, and it's he's literally unlike the meme like hello fellow kids like he like legitimately feels that he is a kid and that because we've had such trauma he possibly yeah. yeah that this is just norm this is the normality. Right? Like, this is just how kids are treated. Like So, the reason why I think some of that, uh, going with the sexual trauma thing, is the mouth pose. Like, the certain things with, like, the... The no tongue. The tongue and all that. Like, it's, it's sexual in nature, especially when you look at adult content. Like, yeah, like, almost like a gag or... Something. Well, yeah, I mean, even like, you know, you get down to like some of the more, uh, oh God, almost, how, do, how do I want to say Almost like, like a ball gag? Like, like hardcore, not necessarily like S&M or like eat bondage, nothing, not that. Like more hardcore, like uh, just porn, like the show me swallow kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was trying yeah. to articulate that in a YouTube safe way. <laughs> yeah, or like, well, like, like the mouth spreaders. <clears throat> yeah, things like that. Like, like sort of. Like it's just it. It even the mouth pose to me speaks like. It, 
like ingrained trauma perhaps now is it like he's digested so much porn content and he finds that look appealing and he's trying to emulate it himself instead of preying on kids but still interacts with kids or is it that he is a victim of childhood trauma and emulates these actions because it's a lived experience and is contacting kids yeah and like the thing with the tongue thing too like it's also could it be metaphorical I mean, like he like do you hear him how he's almost like choking right yeah. like he can't get his words out like yeah it's almost would it be maybe a metaphor for like screaming for help but being gagged i mean that could be that could be a whole you nother know, layer to it yeah you know what i mean like that that's the like what I originally thought was an ARG is not an ARG, but now there's an artistic element that like, like it, 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 it's if this is an ARG, this is terrifyingly woven well, and if it's not, this dude is a monster that should be put on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like it's to the point where like if this is art, like this is one of those pieces of art that is like terrifyingly well done. To the point where it's you've like, had to have experience somewhere to pick up on things yeah you know, like, like, <laughs> or, or, or like one of those things were so terrifyingly well done that like the if the goal is to disturb me you've succeeded <laughs> like you're like i knew you'd be the person that would write like really <laughs> like this by the way <laughs> yeah, because it's an intrigue, because, like, I can look at it from all sides, from an artistic standpoint, from, like, a parent standpoint, you know, because it's like, if I found out that this was messaging my kid, even if it was an ARG, but they hold up. No. Hold yeah. the fuck up. No. Like, you tell your story, but leave my fucking kid out of it. Like, yeah. I'll find you. Like, <laughs> I'll find you. And I'll either reveal to the world that it's an ARG, or I'll reveal... <laughs> the insides of your body to the world. <laughs> Finding this man and reporting him to law enforcement quickly became the top priority for those investigating the case. And luckily, he left several glaring clues behind that made this process a whole lot easier. Okay, what clues have stuck out to you? Aside from, like, I think we figured out pretty quick. Rough age. Yeah, the UK, obviously. Okay. Um, from the outfit and the accent. There was um, another clue there with that possibly the colors of the uniform because i knew do, do you know that certain school systems he, have he blatantly says colors? he blatantly says a city oh does he he said kensington oh well then okay well fuck me yeah yeah if, you, if you're <laughs> if you're really paying attention to it it says kensington at one point and as one of the accounts so it's like well if you're giving away locations typically you're going to give away locations you know or tangentially know so like it's probably going to be somewhere you're familiar with and then uh, then you just go through like what schools had similar uniforms either currently or during the the late 80s to the early 2000s yeah and just give yourself that sort of broad sweep to not you know yeah and then yeah here there's more that'll come out like they figured out his name Ooh. at least first name uh, I believe they have a full name. They have a a city, and they've contact police there. On numerous occasions across his many pages, he would post images and videos of specific locations, even showing streets and mentioning very particular areas in his poems, all of which centered around the London area, immediately giving us an idea of where he was located. And that wasn't all. I mentioned how the alias of Stephanie was one that he used more so than any other, but what's interesting is that there was another name used just as often across his accounts, brought up time and time again, though it's a name that he never seemed to call any of his characters. Instead, he simply referred to this person as a stepbrother, or a father, or even a friend from school, despite never actually picturing him, just mentioning his name, David. And sure enough, after connecting a few dots, it would be revealed that this person's actual name was in fact David. David Alter, with a man being 59 years old. At the moment, it doesn't appear that David has any past criminal convictions or documented history of this behavior, but we do know that thanks to the investigation done on Reddit and Discord, he is currently being investigated by local authorities, which will hopefully put an end to his online behavior and shine some more light on who this person actually is. As for the time being, the only other information that we really know about David is that he likes to write poetry and he makes music. Which now, when you know the age, do the boots make more sense to you at all? Yes, because that would have been, that's a fashion statement of that era. Well, it would have been secondhand, predominantly. So like that was big in the seventies, but if you're if you're growing up as a kid in the eighties, your parents aren't gonna afford a lot. I mean, you're gonna get hand me down stuff. Those boots yeah. may have been it. 
So he's in his 50s. So I was a little off with the time frame, but... Yeah. But, I mean, even so, like, we, we got, like, a pretty good zoned-in reference, even I for pegged, us. I, I pegged it pretty hard. Yeah. Like, just from what I saw. There's an enemy here. There's an enemy here. I think I hear a running tram. Go back in time. Got out of time. I think I like a little lemon and ice. To marry air. It's the heat air. I like the sound of the running tram. And his name also appears in a random newspaper, where he's discussing the importance of kids wearing school uniforms. And that's really all we have at the moment. Though there is one very important aspect that we have yet to talk about in relation to this man, with that being David's mental state. Some believe that David is a mentally unwell individual who potentially doesn't know the extent of what they are doing. Now, even if this is the case, his behavior still needs to be stopped, and he needs to be given proper help to assure that no one else gets hurt by his actions. But it is important to note that David is far more intelligent than he lets on, as his personal accounts show us that he is fairly well-spoken and articulate. And throughout his problematic content, most of his bad grammar and strange verbiage seems to be his attempts at more authentically trying to replicate a child. But it's impossible to know for sure. But what we do know is that David is extremely manipulative, with his response to the situation and other clues littered across his accounts showing us that he seems to know what he's doing, and he knows that it's wrong. Since the exposure of David's accounts, he hasn't silently slithered away like most other predators would. Instead, he's actually responded on more than a few occasions, lashing out to those who have DM'd him, calling them the perverts and predators. He even left a comment on his Joanne account seemingly directed at himself, writing, You are really sad. And if that's your name, David, be honest with yourself. You're 50, as you said elsewhere. You reply to me, a girl, as if I'm your buddy? No chance ever. This is- Now what do you think? So, is it then also like a humiliation fetish? I don't know. They're just things yeah. splinters so many different ways. This is something David does all the time. It's projection, and it started all the way back at the beginning of this rabbit hole. So, that's the account run by a man pretending to be a boy. <laughs> and he continued posting these predator exposés, along with other warnings about predators on the internet across every page he made, each of which being hyper-specific to his own predatory ways and fetishes. The things he accuses others of are blatant projections of his own dark vices. And I can think of two reasons why. Number one, that this makes his account look safer to other parents and children. It gives the appearance that he's not another internet creep because he's actively calling them out. It's a way to build trust in order to befriend and exploit kids. And number two, he knows what he's doing is wrong. And this is his bizarre way of self-reporting, probably to make himself feel better about what he's doing. And it's obvious based on just how accurate these claims against others are to him. Does he wish he were a young boy in a school classroom looking nice and being successful at school? Yes. And these claims are made over and over again, as each time he calls someone out, he's further exposing himself, which becomes more concerning when you realize that these projections seemingly aren't strictly pedophilic. Within those eerily familiar expose posts he made on Truth 611, he mentions how this user not only wanted to exploit children online, but they wanted to kill them as well, as he mentions that this user has a clear interest in cannibalizing kids, and even performing ritualistic sacrifices on them. And based on how accurate all of the other exposures are to himself, I have no reason to believe that this isn't part of his MO as well, as crazy as that may sound. This also seems to coincide with some of the content he's posted that I can't show you, as some of these photos show children edited in contorted positions, including some where he's added what appears to be rope to give the illusion that they're tied up. And what makes this even more disturbing is that on his accounts, he's posted numerous photos in the vicinity of schools, on nearby secluded trails, and even some where he discusses what time school starts and ends, saying that he likes to be awake and ready for it. There's even photos that show other children outside from a distance, almost as if David was stalking them. This is highly concerning. Even if we don't know truly how low this man's perversions get, he is still far too close to children, which is perfectly encapsulated by this photo of him on a school playground during the day. And with his disturbing desires, I don't even want to imagine what he's capable of. Which brings us to the final piece of content that I need to talk about. Chasing another boy running in heeled mini boots. This was the text shown on screen during a short video posted onto one of David's many accounts. And in the video, we see the man pointing the camera at himself, showing his full face of white makeup and red lipstick. <laughs> This video is edited more egregiously than any others I've seen across his page, with multiple explicit images and huge emojis covering the majority of the screen. Though just barely enough of the footage can be seen that shows David as he turns the camera around, revealing a young boy. <laughs> who he then proceeds to chase after, giggling all the while. Whether this was an edited video or a real occurrence, we don't currently know. David's doings are a mystery that will take some time to unravel, and my hope is that law enforcement will be able to follow through and help shed some more light on this individual, and finally put an end to his twisted behavior. But at this point, only one thing is for sure. The story of Smart Schoolboy 9 is far from over. Now that you've watched, what is your thoughts? You know what I feel like? What? I feel like this is a... Whether this is artistic or not, this would be a modern-day... John Wayne Gacy. Yeah? Yeah. I could see that. Did I disturb it, you enough? <laughs> yeah, but now you're also intriguing me. Yeah, there's a couple of videos out there. Even Tom's on his Tom Dark channel has covered this live. I don't know which videos he watched. I have not watched Tom's video, but 
Nexpo has a video out there that's also similar, has a little more detail in a different way, and Nick Crawley was featured in that video. But it explains how Nexpo came across the same stuff. But he came across it on a different aspect of Reddit, even, and, like, has different details, even. Like, there was a postal code posted at one point of MK11. Like, that's how they also narrated the stuff down. Yeah, I, I gotta... After after Raw, I might actually delve into this. Yeah. Do I, it, and let me know what you think. And I might actually look to see about... Um, I might make some burner accounts. Okay. <laughs> and, and, like, try to delve into it on the Instagram side of things, and not just look back... You know, as a yeah, yeah, and do some investigating on my own. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't know <laughs> if I should. Like, <laughs> it's it's fucking disturbing, no matter what way you look at it. If it's art, it's well done to the point where like I have chills of like a roller coaster and just that twenty seven minutes of what's being explained to me. If it's not, then I am seriously concerned. Oh, I, I, I then... yeah, I am concerned either way. Because like, area. even if it's art, it's blurring too much. It's yeah. it's become becoming something that even as art should not exist. Yeah, because like if you're like stalking, yeah, children, you've gone too far at the very least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's like I, I'm not one to like censor art, but like. Well, that, and this is bordering on, and, like, I've not looked into the images. I know there's, um, there's more uncensored stuff. Like, Nick Crawley censored a lot more than Nexpo, if you watch Nexpo's video. The okay. stuff that Nexpo left uncensored is not that much more egregious, but they both said that there is very egregious stuff out there. Yeah. So, and it's like, if that's the case, then it's, it's surpassed art, even in my mind. Yeah, because... Uh, it, it's hard because if it's art, it did its job, but it's to the point where it's crossing that line of like you're actually using real children, and yeah, especially if it's not like you know a friend or a family friend that's helping with a film project, like if he's doing it without their consent to sort of quote unquote add to the realism and the kayfabe, like to sell it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, I just I could see this developing so many ways. None of them are good in my opinion. Yeah, I'm obviously hoping for the ARG <laughs> because with the ARG, there's at least the it disturbed me. It sent the message, and that there's no like legitimate danger to children. Yeah, that's the good ending. That it's an art piece that went too far, but there was no harm done. Yeah. The bad ending is that he's an active predator and he's literally bragging about potentially wanting waiting to kill. outside of waiting outside of a school. Yeah. Expressing how excited he is to get off. Yeah. And he's like This actually... has got Buffalo Bill vibes all over it to me. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm saying like that or like John Wayne Gacy, right? But yeah. instead of a a clown, it's a schoolboy. Right? Yeah. Like it's more relatable. Yeah, like and it's I am thoroughly, completely mind fucked. <laughs> well, I'll go let you watch Wrestle Wrestle with your kid. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely need a cool down, like, because that, <laughs> that was like, I don't know how I feel about it because I'm not comfortable saying I I liked it because I don't know if it's art, because if it's art, then it's well done. Yeah. If it crossed the line, but if it's not. I am uncomfortable with the fact that that exists on a, on like the actual plane of reality, and yeah. it's not yeah. art. You know what I mean? Like, like it's like you said, it blurs the line between kayfabe and reality to the point where it's like, no matter oh. what, it's bad. Yeah, it reminds me of like that res like wrestling, right? Like yeah. ironically, where like. Fiction and nonfiction blur, and sometimes it's uncomfortable. But instead of it being people that hate each other, it's somebody who wants to harm a child. Yep. In that, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't been attacked. 
Ah, uh, I can send you more on that. Oh, yes, please do. 